Hi everyone and welcome to this screencast on using OneNote as a documentation tool. Uh, this video is actually going to be split into two parts. So the first part is meant to deal with, uh, well here's actually an overview of it. So we'll take a quick look at a definition um, and some background on pedagogical documentation from the Ontario Capacity Building Series. Uh, we'll take a quick review of our page templates and then structure the template so that we can use it as a tool for documenting. And of course, questions and answers uh, are done through the website contact form. Part two, part two video will then deal with once you are in the classroom and doing your documentation. So if you're looking to do something beyond the use of paper and pencil, then what devices can be used and how would you go about using them with the tool that you create? Of course, the answer to that is the OneNote app. But we'll see that in the part two video. So for now, let's head in and take a quick look at an overview of pedagogical documentation. So I'm here on the flip PL is um, a smaller version of that building series monograph. It's available for download. But you can read it right here if you're on the site and have it as I do. So let's head over to OneNote. That's where I got that. along with the capacity building series monograph. And recall that in part one video file printout of things that you have downloaded. So it's going to take me to a place to search up some files and insert it there as an attachment or a full printout. So a couple of questions to get us thinking and those are what is documentation and referring to that what makes it pedagogical? So at this point in time, we have a couple of options. Uh, I'm going to scroll through to a relevant section, I think, that uh, would help us to answer those two. But I would encourage you to uh, to pause or to stop the video and take a moment and go online for yourselves or go to the Flipdale website uh, through the link that's been shared with you uh, via your email and take a moment and have a look at page two. Okay, or for that matter, read as much of it as you like, and then come on back to the video, and we'll continue. So, on to scene page two. Let me go to that now. I've embedded it here with my one. And a few terms. Uh, we'll start with uh, so the understanding of how learning takes place and those philosophies and practice that supports the understanding of learning. Uh, documentation defines the practice of observing, recording, interpreting, sharing, meeting processes and products of learning, you know, deep understand learning. These physical traces of others revisit, interpret, reinterpret, and even recreate experience. And lastly, pedagogical documentation a process for making pedagogical or other visible subject dialogue, interpretation, contestation, and transformation. So in essence, I guess my current understanding, our best understanding of it at this point in time, is that anything that we uh, have to go about observing, recording, and interpreting, that itself, that documentation becomes pedagogical. When we go back, and we analyze and interpret that documentation with respect to several things. It could be one thing at a time, it could be several things. So those things against which we can compare them to would be things like success criteria. Okay? We might be looking back at goals. We might be looking back or shining a light back on curriculum expectations. So there are a number of things that we can connect our documentation to, or rather to interpret through. But, uh, there was a part of the reading here 
Let's see if I can scan and find that again. Oh, here. Um, in essence, part of what makes documentation pedagogical is the careful iterative process of examining and responding to the interplay between learning and the educator's pedagogical decisions and the student's role in voice in the learning. So that, that part is the one thing that I hadn't mentioned compare the documentation to, but rather, this is, this is new. This is comparing what we've collected to student's role or to the student's voice. So ultimately, we need to go about cultivating and uh, giving credence to the student's voice in light of explaining the work that they have done. Um, this teacher and a researcher goes on to explain in the next paragraph uh, they were using video documentation to share with students uh, the richness of their mathematical thinking, which then enabled them to understand problem solving. So in this way, the documentation helped them challenge their own assumptions about their limitations and to see their futures. Differently. So the documentation, in essence, helps you recreate that learning pathway. It also helps us to repurpose that information or to help students repurpose that information to deepen their, their own learning. Okay. So if you have questions or comments you'd like to post, uh, by all means, share them back with me and uh, I can then share them back with the community. So let's keep on going here. Let's have a look back at our agenda. So I'll take you back to the website. And uh, with the website, uh, the formation of a template that would help or possibly help to serve our needs in uh, documenting student learning in the classroom. So, so let's go into my notebook. So I'll just close the notebook up here. My notebook is a section um, that is uh, for a new user to OneNote, and that was kind of explained it in the first video. So let's a tool for documentation. I'm just going to call this an observation tool. Observation tool. And I'm just going to insert a table. And for that table, we might uh, create a few headings, so subject that we're going to look at. Uh, goals, expectations, criteria, that kind of thing. Uh, we might look at overall expectation. We may look at specifics. Okay, so we'll list all this information so we have when going back and looking upon uh, the work that's done in terms of student thinking in our documentation. Uh, we might look at some learning goals. Uh, we might go so far as to list uh, six criteria. That we have either uh, provided depending on the instructional method we're using, but if it's through inquiry, having co created those success criteria, so just going to put a few checkboxes. So learning goals we are learning to. Etc. Okay, so we have all that data in front of us. These are our specific expectations, our overall expectations. Okay. The strands. So let me insert a, a row below that. So let's insert a row just below. There it is. And focus on the strand. And identify tasks that are being used. So this particular template could be used uh, for successive documentation. So you could set it up that way. If you're using several tasks to try to address a particular goal or goals through a variety of success criteria. Okay, so that sort of lays out the background. Okay. So underneath that, I'd probably go ahead, I would insert another table. Within that table, we would have information regarding student name, 
of the criteria that we're using. So however many criteria, we'll have our documentation, observational notes, um, feedback. Um, we should probably put something in there for our interpretation of that and maybe some next steps. So, so as mentioned, we'd have our student name, we'd have our success criteria. So up here, we could label them, say, uh, this would be the first one, so A, uh, B, C, etc. Now down here, if I do it this way, it just makes track easier. So with this, we could end up putting in some check boxes. And that way, as we go through our observation, we can just click that off. Um, Perhaps that is checked off after we examine the documentation. So documentation here. This could be the, through the form of uh, you know, some transcribed notes. It could be through the form of pictures of an image that's been taken. Could be video. Okay. Um, so either your voice or student voice. Um, so those are different things you could do there. Uh, observation. So this might be perhaps some written notes, some field notes that you've taken. Over here, we might want to give ourselves some time to do an interpretation. And uh, I'm just going to put in. And in terms of that interpretation, let's put that in here. So you might have places where you do want to go back and cultivate some student voice in order to help you make an interpretation that allows you to get some great feedback. So that feedback, so that's your feedback provided to the student, or perhaps your student's stage where they are taking that feedback and they are utilizing it themselves, so through self-assessment or peer assessment. And then some next steps. So next steps could be anything that directs you uh, to plan some form of uh, additional teaching or structuring another inquiry. Maybe it's something to do with uh, you know telling the student they should go ahead and try to assess their own learning based on success criteria. Maybe you're having them uh, do assessment. So these are places where you can get some ideas about where students go next. So overall, when you go ahead and you publish that particular tool up, um, what I would say in part one is then to go back and create this as a template. So under the insert menu, go to your templates or page templates. Just here. Um, I've created one already. Let's click on page template. And if you go to save current pages template, then that will show up within your My Template section, which is here. So if I expand upon that, I'll click on this one here. It's a new page, which you can see over here. And that's the one that I'm that using. One thing that I have not put in my Cross in terms of creating this video for you is to insert here, actually here, to insert to the right of that particular column, which I'm going to call uh, of the documentation, as well as the observations being made, and I'm trying to bring in student voice as well. So that sort of is a quick overview of pedagogical documentation. It also allows you to see how you can create a template with the OneNote and actually go about doing that. Okay. So in the second video, we'll go a little more, um, I guess, more, more hands-on. Uh, we'll look at the nuts and bolts of actually how to take your device, be it a phone or an iPad, uh, you know, teacher device. And then perhaps inserting uh, into documentation, like taking the video, 
uh, getting audio files uh, placed into uh, this organizer for you. Okay, so let's get back to the end and make sure we've covered all of the bases. And in terms of that, um, last but not least is the website contact form below. You scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's a section in there for you. Um, by all means, please give suggestions for videos, send along your questions or comments, and then I'll respond to you in a timely manner. That's not the least point. Before we go, I'm just going to check our timing here. In terms of not too long. So we're in a good position. We're about 15 minutes. So wrap things up here quickly. But in terms of making connections to pedagogy, so remember that you know, this particular technology, that really is meant to help us have a greater impact <coughs> in terms of our ability to teach and learn uh, alongside our students. So it's certainly meant to allow us to capture information we perhaps may not have been able to before and perhaps as efficiently in capturing that information in such a way that we can then take that time to interpret it and then leverage that information in providing some great descriptive feedback to students okay so technology simply means of heightening or expanding our ability <laughs> to be pedagogical and that is going to that place or that stage where we really are reflecting upon what students present us. And that allows us then to plan a mention, plan a lesson, make some decisions as to what we'd like to do to help students advance their own learning. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to the screencast. And we'll see you back here. As a documentation tool.